Thank you. Wow. First of all, that was Meryl Streep. <laughs> Thank you. And I want to say thanks to my dear friend, Malala Yousafzai. You know, I met Malala on her 16th birthday, actually, at the UN. And I said to her, we were backstage, and I said to her, you know, we have a few people here to celebrate your 16th birthday. And of course, we walked out. It was 500 young people from over 100 countries in front of every major media house in the world. And I got all of them to stand up and sing for her happy birthday. <laughs> I'll never forget that look on her face. And it is what you Americans will call sweet 16 indeed. <laughs> it's been an incre incredible honor to be on this journey uh, with Malala over the past year, fighting for the rights to education for all. It's a journey for me that started when I was born in a beautiful and loving family in the slums of my country, Sierra Leone. The innocence and peace of my childhood were interrupted by the horrors and violence of a vicious civil war uh, when I was only six years old. I witnessed loved ones and family members being killed, brutally raped, or amputated. I saw my home being burnt down my school being burnt down. I had to run for my life with my family. I'll never forget one of those nights in the chaos of people running helter-skelter. In the middle of the night, my mom was running away and bullets blaring all around, and I ran after her and grabbed her arms, and we ran together. And that night, we somehow ended up from falling into a pit together to dodging bullets under an abandoned car to, of course, being crammed in a basement with other people who were all there as well, trying to seek refuge from the carnage that was outside. It was about moments like that, being a refugee and growing up in a context like that. It was about survival and striving every day to stay together with our family. We had no time to feel sorry for ourselves. Of course, for my mom, it was also about you have to study. You always had to continue to fight for a better life. And that's what drives me today, to fight for a better world, where being a refugee is not a life sentence of ignorance. I started that fight when I was only 15 years old, and my friends and I had what many people thought was a crazy idea. Children had suffered so much in the war, and we thought we want to contribute to the peace and be part of shaping the future of our country. Luckily, the Minister of Children's Affairs at the time dared us and said, if you can organize yourselves, we'll support you. <laughs> In six months, my friends and I organized over 40 children's clubs all around the country, and we formed what uh, we call the Children's Forum Network, Sierra Leone's Children's Parliament. I was elected the first president. <laughs> I went around the country talking to all the children and young people about what had happened to us during the war. The goal was to testify and share these stories with our country's Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Everywhere I went, every child had a story to tell. Everyone wanted to tell that story. The most important message for the future was that the worst thing we could lose or we lost was hope, that education gives that hope. And it's the same message I've had everywhere I've been around the world, that education is hope. And I'm proud today to continue to fight for that hope in my role as a youth advocate, as a leader, and yes, as a girl champion. In my job at a world at school supporting the incredible work of Mr. Gordon Brown, the UN Special Envoy for Global Education, I mobilize and equip young people around the world to demand our rights to education. 57 million children today are out of school. Education is underfunded by $26 billion every year. We're fighting to change that. In my job as chair of the Youth Advocacy Group for the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon's Education Initiative, I bring the voices of young people that I encounter around the world to shape global education policy and advocacy. And of course, I'm very proud of my role as a girl champion, fighting for a world where being a girl irrespective of where you are, like my two sisters, will no longer be a disadvantage. I am incredibly grateful to the Women's Refugee Commission for this distinguished award. 
I look at the profile of all the amazing people that have won before me and the amazing women who win today, and it's just deeply humbling. But I want to close by dedicating this award to the inspiration in my life. And I couldn't be happier that she traveled all the way from Sierra Leone and she's with us here today, first time in the US, Mandea Mom, who is sitting here. Thank you. Thank you. Everything you taught me, Mama, about courage, hope, inspiration, sacrifice, and service have failed this journey to this day and will continue to drive me on. Thank you so much, everybody.